It is alleged that misinformation in India is an organized and carefully mined operation to benefit the ruling BJP. Fake news and hyper-nationalist content on the internet are promoted to an unprecedented level to manipulate public opinions, especially before elections. Most people usually don't go back and verify whether the content they are consuming is true or not, according to a BBC report. Another report by BBC shows that WhatsApp, which has the biggest market in India, is the largest carrier of fake news and misinformation in the country. The Wall Street Journal had also reported instances of individuals within Facebook's management favoring the ruling BJP in India. Al Jazeera reported that the BJP and its affiliates are the biggest direct political ad publishers on Facebook, and it has also allowed many BJP allied advertisers to campaign for the party, bypassing India's election laws and Facebook's own guidelines. Therefore, BJP's visibility often gets doubled during elections through the spread of fake news and misinformation by its advertisers. It is alleged that misinformation on social media also helped former President Donald Trump to come into power in 2017. It can it can be undeniably stated that the kind of misinformation which favors BJP or which shows other political parties in poor light, uh, that sort of misinformation dominates the discourse. Now the form of such misinformation is typically in form of old videos and old images being shared as new videos, uh, as pre videos of present. Uh, they are miscaptioned, mislabeled and the other purpose of uh, pushing out misinformation is to defame candidates, to show them that, you know, they are, show them in poor light or show them that they are favoring Muslims and things like that. The sheer scale and the sheer speed at which fake news hateful speech, speech that demonizes one community, notably Muslims, is unprecedented. It's never happened in India or for that matter anywhere in the world. All these platforms are being misused to spread Islamophobia. This has never happened on this scale. It's not that propaganda, fake news, disinformation, misinformation was absent in the past. A new 2022 research found that India, along with the US and the UK, contributed an astonishing 86% of anti-Muslim content on the then social media platform Twitter, now X, during a three-year period. Such online hate speech and the religious vilification of Muslims have often led to physical attacks on them and their places of worship. In the US, the hate speech includes posts defending former President Donald Trump's Muslim immigration ban and anti-Muslim conspiracy theories like Democrats collaborating with so-called Islamists to take over the West. According to recent statistics released by the Home Office, nearly half of all hate crime victims in England and Wales in the year ending March 2021 were Muslims. Among the ex-users in India, researchers blame India's ruling BJP for spreading and continuously increasing anti-Muslim hate. According to them, the BJP has actively normalized hatred towards Muslims to such an extent that 55.12% of posts with anti-Muslim hatred now originate in India. However, Elon Musk, in an interview with the BBC, said that he was probably going to abide by the BJP government's orders on censoring information on X due to strict social media rules in India. According to many analysts, online anti-Muslim content in India often includes the association of Islam with terrorism, the depiction of Muslims as perpetrators of sexual violence, the fear that Muslims wish to impose Islamic Sharia law on others and the conspiracy theories that allege the Indian Muslim community trying to increase their population to overtake the Hindu majority. जो IT सेल थे या या जो आपका सोशल मीडिया में इस तरह घृणास्पद स्तर तक रिपोर्टिंग की गई और पोस्टें डाली गई मतलब आप देखिएगा कि उसके बाद लगातार ये माहौल हो गया कि इनका बाइकाट करना है तो ये ये सब सारा का सारा सोशल मीडिया के माध्यम से उसमें लगातार एक तरफा और घृणास्पद जो पोस्टें डाली गई इसका इस्तेमाल किया गया Far right Hindu groups have long demanded the construction of Hindu temples over mosque sites and this forms an important element of Hindutva politics in India 
The construction of the Ram Temple at the site of Babri Mosque in Ayodhya has always been a part of BJP's manifesto, and recently the party has also conferred the highest civilian award, Bharat Ratna, to Lal Krishna Advani, who led the movement to build a Ram Temple at the site of Babri Mosque. After the Babri Mosque, the Gyan Vapi Mosque in Varanasi is another centuries-old Mughal-era mosque where the Hindu nationalists want to construct a temple. They claim to have found the symbol of a Hindu deity, Shiva, in the ablution area of the mosque. Later, the Hindu worshippers were allowed to pray inside the mosque after a court order. However, a report by Al Jazeera claims that the court order violates an Indian law, the Places of Worship Act 1991, which prohibits the alteration of all religious places as they existed on August 15, 1947, the day of India's independence from the British colonization. According to political scientist Zoya Hassan, such issues have always proved to be beneficial to the BJP in the mobilization of Hindus and have often led to religious polarization, such as in the case of Babri Mosque in Ayodhya. कुछ तो स्पेस दिए होते सेवेन डेज का टाइम था आप बाइट दे रहे हैं वी हैव सेवेन डेज टाइम उसके बाद भी इतनी हर बड़ी की आपको देखिए बाबरी मस्जिद पब्लिक ने तोड़ी थी कार से वकलाई गई थी ये थोड़ा अदालत आ रही थोड़ा सिस्टम आ रहे आर्डर होता है चार छह घंटे के अंदर इंप्लीमेंटेशन भी हो जाता है हमारे भी बहुत से इशू हैं बड़े हुए उसका इम्प्लीमेंटेशन नहीं हो रहा हम अपने गुस्से का इजहार तो कर ही सकते हैं आपसे आज हम जो बोल रहे हैं कभी हम इतना नहीं बोलते लेकिन हम देख रहे हैं क्या जाति हो रही क्या जुर्म हो रहा है और कब तक और ये एक मस्जिद का मसला नहीं उनका नारा है तीन नहीं तीस हजार नहीं बचेगी एक भी मस्जिद और मजार ये उसी रास्ते पर चल रही इस शहर की तीन चार मस्जिदों पे वो दावा ठोकने जा रहे हैं मैंने अभी कह दिया एक लाइन में कह दिया कि अब हमें इस मुल्क में इंसाफ की कोई भी बातें नहीं बचेगी in 2023, India slipped from 150 to 161 in the World Press Freedom Index of 180 countries compiled by Reporters Without Borders since Narendra Modi became Prime Minister in 2014. The violence against journalists, the politically biased media and the concentration of media ownership all indicate that press freedom has been declining in the world's largest democracy since 2014. According to Amnesty International, Indian authorities are continuously imposing illegal and politically motivated restrictions on freedom of expression and targeting journalists by prosecuting them under counter-terrorism and sedition laws. The rights organization has reported the crackdown on dissent by authorities that have encouraged Hindu nationalists to threaten, harass and abuse journalists critical of the BJP government in February 2023, the tax authorities in India raided the BBC offices in Delhi and Mumbai, accusing the BBC of evading taxes. The raid took place less than a month after the BBC released a documentary critical of Modi, causing uproar within the BJP. The documentary alleged Modi for the anti-Muslim violence in Gujarat in 2002, which killed more than 1,000 people and displaced tens of thousands. However, in 2022, the Indian Supreme Court upheld the 2012 report of the Special Investigation Team that cleared Prime Minister Modi from all charges relating to the 2002 Gujarat riots. Space for opposition that should exist in any democracy. Second is a critical look at government, which is necessary for any constitutional democracy to function. Both these things are disappearing and all the other media that you name, online media or media, it has such a small influence that as far as the government is concerned, they might as well not exist. So in that sense, the complete lack of critical examination of the government obviously ensures that many of the features of constitutional democracy that 
make for a vibrant polity are disappearing from it. There are a lot of these uh, steps that have been taken by the government, either by bringing in more regulation or being using loop, legal loopholes to go after uh, journalism, uh, journalists as well as uh, out, uh, news outlets. And that really uh, kind of this this has created a sense of fear among journalists and that's something that um, you know that it cannot really be ignored and you know you just can't keep on claiming that oh you know everything is hunky dory we are still the biggest you know democracy on earth modi and his ruling bjp are using social media influences in fields ranging from music to culture and fashion to fitness to push their political message especially among the young people who make up more than half of india's population Many of these social media influencers have a striking similarity with the BJP in their promotion of India's Hindu majority culture. Critics say that what encourages the influencers to support the BJP is the chance to increase their followers and income from social media posts by collaborating with the BJP, which is expected to win a third term. According to the Internet Freedom Foundation, the close ties between the government and the major social media influencers are something to be worried about, as many of the influencers back the BJP's right-wing ideology. Critics see the government's links with social media influencers as part of a soft power policy by the Hindu nationalist BJP. Self-proclaimed news channels on YouTube with millions of viewers are propagating false news that is helping Prime Minister Modi in his campaign. The biased YouTube influencers are making political content in favor of the ruling BJP, ranging from mocking and attacking Modi's rival politicians to promoting conspiracy theories about Muslims trying to harm Hindus. With 462 million YouTube users in India, more Indians are consuming such misinformation from YouTube. And according to a new investigation by rights groups Global Witness and Access Now, YouTube has allegedly approved dozens of ads promoting voter suppression and incitement to violence ahead of national elections in India. Current government have been focusing a lot of on Hinduism and Sanatan that which is important to do because somehow we are forgetting that roots and culture and I think it's important to bring that system and that education system which we call the Guru Shishya Parampara or uh, anything that is related to our culture and that has been uh, an integral part of our culture. So the current government have been focusing a lot of a uh, lot of on this thing. So that might create this uh, opinion in the people or in in uh, in anyone that I belong to right side or something like that but as of now I'm a neutral person at this particular uh, particular time I think there's no other leader who is doing good for the country and you don't have any other option as of now what is the effect right of uh, that constant messaging in favor of uh, you know one particular political party that is extremely concerning and something that uh, you know we should look at look at very seriously